lucky. Man, this this brings me back to the uh the offline days, right? When we would go to lands and then you'd hear Thor get locked in like 13 times and TK gets knocked out of his chair. That it's it's you know, it's it's bringing me home a little bit. That's that will always be a classic Brawlhalla clip. I'm putting that up there to another clip that TK was in where it was like him, Coney, and I can't remember who the third one was. It might have been EE, -E, but where they threw the tie, the tie and, it, and it landed yeah. on the head. A classic yeah. Brawlhalla clip coming from TK. We're going to have a classic Brawlhalla set here coming in as we move in to the apocalypse. Here comes Blue Guys with the Val pick against Blazy's Azon. Very interesting. I'm not sure if Blue Guys has light to pick up or if he was really opting for a really low nair on that weapon spawn, but it was Blazy who was able to get that initial pickup. Uh, first tick of damage did go the way of Blazy, but Blue Guys finally finding a little bit of a response. You're seeing some damage come out, but Blaze, ooh, didn't pick up the axe. I was, you saw him go for the up toss and then dash away. I think he was expecting to pick up that axe immediately. I don't know if we've seen this exact matchup before, but for some reason, whenever you started talking about that low nair, I got yeah. huge huge vibes like i've seen this exact thing happening before that doesn't really matter but it's just a weird feeling <laughs> i can't shake right now Yo, a little bit of matrix moment right now you're kind of uh see i don't i don't actually know what that means when you see the thing that you've already experienced in the matrix uh, you're just thinking of deja vu it doesn't have anything to do with the matrix no, but it's, i, I it's can't like, see it's the like code. a thing in the matrix whatever downlight nair blazy uh, opting not to go for the recovery recovery there is the knockout tool but uh, maybe just didn't have that dare hit, or sorry, the downlight hit, and it's going to be Blue Guys who actually gets the offstage, gets the ground pound for the first stock. So my biggest question for Blue Guys going into this was whether or not he was going to lead with the Rayman. You've seen him start off with the Val that he has level 100 up, but he's been swapping over to the Rayman after the Val hasn't been working, and his Rayman has been so clutch. You saw it in his previous set. He was down two games, swapped over to the Rayman, and it started working like crazy. So I wonder how early, if at all, we'll see him swap over to that Rayman here against Blaze. I think a lot of it depends on how this first game goes. Of course, Blue Guy's looking okay in this first game. Of course, going about even with Blaze. Um, if it continues this way, regardless of win or lose, I think he'll stick with the Val. Uh, that being said, if somehow Blaze ends up winning the next two stocks, not losing this one, that side six is going to kind of help that story go. Uh, then there is that potential that Blue Guys, like, if he gets rocked too hard right now on this Val, might make that swap immediately. Blue Guys is behind here, just knocked Blazy into the orange. He's able to grab some gauntlets into his hand. He's avoiding a lot of these signatures from Blazy so far. You did see him just get knocked out by one, but a lot of these he's been able to avoid and punish. Yeah, he is playing relatively well around Blazy. You see him make the swap over to the sword, wants to continue that weapon denial. Opportunity for the stock, but not able to connect with the weapon toss. So Blazy gonna just make that rotate to the right, pick up the bow, start adding more damage, and uh, slowly almost guarantee this game. Blue Guys has to find the KO here. He gets the raw recovery. You saw him go for the GC D-Light that he's been leading into recoveries. He's also been starting off those side light options, doing the double side light in the same direction. He started most of his mix-ups off with that early on. Oh no, dropping the recovery. Yeah. Neutral Sig misses as well. The side air comes out from Blazy, knocking Blue Guys into the orange. Hits the down air, not even a sweet spot. Bounces off the wall, still enough to KO, but Blue Guys has to find something big. The clutch factor has come through with the Rayman. I don't know if he can do it with the Val here. Blazy is very far ahead, easily picks up the weapon spawn that comes in on the soft platform. Oh, 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 he oh. couldn't get away from it. He moved through Blazy, and Blazy had the read. That is so incredibly unique to Azoth, right? He has that backwards movement with the bow shot, and that's so smart of Blazy. Nine times out of ten, when a character's body moves towards you, they're also moving a hitbox towards you. So Blue Guys was reacting to the fact that there's a body flying at him, not realizing that the body's turned around, putting a shot where it was a little bit of anime logic. And there you see in Blue Guys, he's like, you know what, I got rocked. I got hit by too many stocks. You know what, I'm make the swap over to the Rayman into game number two. Man, look at that graph. You see how quick the second stock of Blue Guys was. It was very skinny. Did not take a lot of time for him to take enough damage to be knocked out and for that graph to plummet down back Three, to zero. Two, that was a rough one, second stock one. for Blue Guys. And on the other side, you saw that Blazy had some really long extended peaks, had a very good stock extension 
um, on that game. And now we're over into game two. Rayman for blue guys, and we've got the Axe Mirror match. Both of them stacked up, neither of them going for the stacked option with the Neutralite instead, waiting for the opportunity to go for kind of a combo started with the sideline. Lazy having a little bit more control as we start this game compared to Blue Guys, but it's only slight. The neutral light is going to send Blue Guys into the orange. Bow comes out. D-Light into the side air. Sends Blue Guys over the edge. Neutral air sending Blue Guys up. Weapon Spot comes in, gets through the SIG, and comes with the down air. Another SIG he gets through. Unfortunately, the soft platform there is going to interrupt what he wanted to hit Blazy with. It's interesting how Blazy is opting to try to finish these stocks, going for either the safe option of this bow nair, which it'll take a lot for a bow nair to finish off. Now he's going to be able to get that downlight into the recovery, or you saw a lot of signatures start to come out from Blazy. It looks like Blazy likes to have the axe for the damage build and then the bow just for the signature kit for the knockouts. Definitely more favorable on the signature kit coming out from the blow. Oh my gosh, a four nice. hit string there, putting a lot of damage on a blue, guys. He's on the Rayman, he's on his clutch character, and he hasn't found the clutchness yet. Oh, oh Blazy, Blazy, not my... like that! Come on, found it. <laughs> Blazy's gonna overextend. That's not a clutch! That's yeah. Blazy popping the clutch on his car, didn't realize it was a manual, non automatic. Oh my goodness. That is what blue guys needed to start oh. bringing this game back. Oh no, he, he needs that again. all possible momentum as the GC side signature comes out from Blazy's axe. Yo, I like the plays from blue guys though. Not gonna panic dash into the down signature from Blazy. He's showing his hand a little bit there with that dash pivot down sig. Blue guy is looking like he's ready for it this time. Blue guy's just really struggling to get in. Even that D-Light doesn't lead to anything. He's been hitting D-Light recoveries consistently so far today, and he is taking so much damage on this final stock. Weapon Toss goes wide, picks up the axe, but it's the weak recovery. Oh, Weapon nice. Toss following toss. up off the side air. Going to be the KO option, but again, he's in a similar spot to where he was last game. He has a lot of damage on this stock. Blazy's coming in fresh. We'll see if he can keep Blazy off a weapon. D-Light's coming out, expecting maybe a gravity cancel neutral heavy or just a raw neutral heavy. Neutral air comes out. Almost since Blue Guy's off screen. He's still been doing a pretty good job avoiding a nice. lot of the signatures that we've seen Blazy hit on other players today. Blue Guy's has to find something to stop this momentum from Blazy. A gimp here could do it. Blazy gets back onto the Main platform, weapon toss comes out. Blazy grabs the weapon. Axe side air takes the game. Blazy one game away from going into the grand finals. Giving some love to me with the clan tag, and I gotta call him out for it. And of course, on top of that, upsetting Sparky, which is you know that's just the icing on the prediction cake. Blazy looking so incredibly strong. Of course, repping the Dia de los Muertos with the skeleton skin on today of all days. Fantastic picks from Lazy, and it's Blue Guys sticking with the Rayman for game number three. Still choosing to ban out soft platform maps, and we're going back to Mammoth. It took Blue Guys just a moment before he chose to lock in. Coming in on the movement speed stance, both players actually on the movement speed stance. It's going to be Azoth going from four to five, and the Rayman going from six to seven. We'll see if Blue Guys can start schmoving with that higher movement speed here against Blazy. Weapon spot coming in. Blue Guys backs up initially. Blazy keeps going forward, and Blue Guys actually grabs the first weapon, but it's going to be a bow shortly after for Blazy. Yo, but yet no damage being put out from Blue Guys just yet. Got a soft tap with the downlight. Attempted the down signature. Wants to go for some of these bigger plays on the offstage, but now he's starting to add up that damage. Looking pretty even here in game number three. Blazy just backed up. Blue Guys finally landed. Got a couple hits. D-Light Dare has the gauntlets in hand. Oh, no. Gets the D-Sig when he's in orange. Dodge. Oh, Blue Got Guys going past for the G -Sig. Oh, he has to be careful here. He doesn't have a lot of oh. options. Oh, no. Blazy still in control, but does not pick up the weapon. Doesn't need one for the Haymaker. And Blazy to take the first stock. And he's, he's trying to decide which of the two weapons he wants. He was looking like a bot, just yeah. running left and right. What was that? I thought he was about to walk off the stage oh. and just KO himself. But Blue Guy is going to get the KO with the recovery. Going to go for the weapon denial again. He likes to go for that uh, just triple jump throw upwards. Yo, Blazy finding good unarmed damage. 
Now has the bow in his hand, so his damage potential is going to be much higher. Blue guys hit him into the yellow. They're almost equal. That D-Light neutral light, though, going to put blue guys into the orange. Backside of the dare, again, goes for the D-Sig, but he's only doing it on, like, the top side of the wall. He's kind of been telegraphing it a little bit, doing it in the exact same spot. Yeah, and Blaze has been ready for it. He's been just underneath it, playing really well around that option. Very familiar with this matchup. Big side air, and Blue Guys is in trouble. Weapon toss gets dodged through, but Blazy still maintains the control. Has the corner, has the weapons. Oh, Blue Guys, pick up the. Please pick up the weapon. <laughs> oh, no. Ends up hitting Blazy it's towards There's a D6. Oh, my gosh, dude. <laughs> Blazy, one stock away. Blazy feeling real good. Not even concerned about weapon denial. You see the way that Blue Guys plays the respawn, right? Like, he goes up and is trying to delay the weapon spawn, but Blazy's like, I'm just gonna run around on stage, get some laps in. Got my Fitbit on. Sidelight Nair waits, goes for another Nair. Blue Guys a little bit too low, neutral light. Okay. Sidelight into the recovery, gets the KO. Blue Guys not too far behind, about 50 damage. You see he's in yellow right now. Let's see if he can actually weapon star Blazy this time. The weapon spawn is here. Blazy grabs the bow quickly. Didn't get hit by the three piece. It was only two, but a neutral light comes out as well, adding more damage on a Blazy. Getting through the D light. Blue guys have struggled a little bit with those. Ooh. Oh no! Even takes the That's signature there. That's some good damage in favor of Blazy, but Blue Guys maintaining the low ground is still getting these downlights. This is the best Blue Guys has looked in these final stocks, but he denies himself a weapon and one more down signature, and Blazy is going to be going into the grand finals. That almost KO'd, too. That's insane. Oh, disarming. Blazy gets back to the main platform, avoiding the side heavy this time. Oh, be careful. Oh, be the careful. The soft platform, the soft platform, saving your life. Just outside these side airs, Blazy with the micro spacing, throws out the down signature. Blue Guys is in a really good spot. The yes! ground pound. Blue Guys going to take game number three and take this into game number four. Blue Guys has to win every game here in order to get to the grand finals. You know, I've wanted Blue Guys on stream for like <laughs> over a year. Uh -huh. Going all the way back to when like Blueface was hot, because I wanted to make a bunch of Blueface references. But he's definitely like out now. Thing? Like no one cares about Blueface anymore. That's, that's, I'm assuming that's not a, a Blue Man group. No, Blueface the rapper. Blueface baby. Wrote Tatiana. Oh, okay. I like that song. Wrote Bleed 'em. Not familiar with that one, but we're here in game number four where there's a completely different song playing as this is Crystal Temple, a song that uh, Foda very much enjoys. Yeah, I don't think Blueface had any hand in this, but we'll see if Blue Guys Probably has not. a hand in taking out this first stock, but not good damage early on. Yeah, got a couple we of are, hands there. We are going to this map with two soft platforms. We see a lot of mammoth between these two players. We'll see if these soft platforms help either Blue Guys or Blazy. That neutral signature from Excellent. both players here on their current weapons. We'll cover those soft platforms a little bit. Lazy. Gonna make the swap over to the Axe. A little bit wider hitboxes on these shots. There's a nice little Nair underneath. What? You guys? Oh, double dare. Side light off the soft platform, but couldn't get the final hit. Nice big side air. Again, puts Blue Guys in trouble. And the weapon toss. Oh, and the man. down air just in case, guaranteeing the knockout. And Blazy gonna juggle these weapons for a little bit, trying to delay the weapon spawn. Now, Blue Guys did lose his weapon very early on in that. So, one, he didn't have anything to throw against Blazy coming up. He also didn't have the side air to help him get back. Blazy hitting these signatures. He's in the red now. In comes the axe from Blue Guys. The backside of that grounded dare. Are you kidding me? Blazy popping off with the axe, but Blue Guys is going to shut down that first stock, at least delay this momentum a little bit. Blue Guys trying to decide what weapon he wants, but he couldn't really decide. You saw the indecisiveness. Almost curse him, almost didn't get his weapon back. Oh, the second guy. Who, why are people hitting that so much today? <laughs> Steven commented guy. on it earlier, but geez, man, people are hitting that way too much. It's always it's always been the one that hits. The first guy is the one, it's kind of like Greatsword, right? Like you get baited into thinking that it's safe to punish, and then the second guy comes out and shoots you for it. I still just don't think that Sig is that strong. I could be wrong, but. Oh, dodges through the recovery. Blue Guys has to find something big here. He's taking nice. a lot of damage. Already oh, no. in the orange. Oh, that was really bad for Why'd him. I can go for the exhausted one. That's so crazy. On the wake up with the sidelight, Blue Guys is taking damage. Blazy 
about to put the nail in this coffin, going for some risky reads, but he's got stocks to play. He's he's going crazy right now. Lazy's like the dodging, just going nuts. Oh man, he didn't capitalize any further after he got the dodge by interrupting the neutral oh. signature. Oh. <laughs> Blue Guys gets knocked out 3-1 by Blazy. Blazy moving on into the grand finals, completely controlling almost every game in that set. That's my boy Blazy. Gonna take that one, go into the grand finals. Guaranteed top two finish. And now he gets to just sit, wait, watch, see what the last people in the lower bracket are gonna do. And what's also nice is, as we have said time and time again with these double elimination tournaments, is that when you're in the grand finals, you have that winner's bracket bonus of having to lose two sets in a row to get knocked out. Otherwise, you go home the champion, you go home as the 32nd seed in the world championship coming November 22nd. Now, I do wanna bring up, since you're talking big about your boy Blazy, was he your second or your third pick? It was my first to win this tournament. Nope, that's not true. You originally, yeah, well, technically, technically originally my first Zico. pick was LDZ. Yeah. First, first pick was LDZ, and then LDZ so. just didn't play, which is my curse, because apparently I pick people who decide to sign up for tournaments and then not show up at all. But so you're talking real big about your boy, your number one man, Blazy. <laughs> He's not really your number one. He's your second string pick. He's your JV pick. Yeah, imagine being upset about being the JV pick behind the two-time world champion. I don't think Blazy can be too salty about that one. But either way, I know you're salty because your third pick is down in the lower bracket, uh, awaiting the winner of our next match, Zakoi versus Feeblestar. Again, a lot of people putting a lot of love on Zakoi. Of course, if we go to the Twitters right now and look at some of the top players, some of the players who have already earned their spot in the world championship, you see them saying Zakoi is going to take this one. But he's here in the lower bracket. It is going to be harder for him to make this run. Yeah, Boomy's doing a stream right now uh, with a very healthy amount of viewers. And he's in there with uh, a lot of pros like Sandstorm. Uh, Santi's in there. Crocky's in there. Egg is in there. Uh, I apologize if I didn't name who else was in there. I think Van Thurl's in there, who, according to Zakoi, you should sub to Van Thurl on YouTube. But... He is talking very highly about Sakoi. He was very sad when Blue Guys knocked out Sakoi earlier. So I know a lot of players are really rooting for Sakoi here. Yeah, definitely a lot of love from the upper uh, level players in the North American region for Sakoi. On the other side, Feeblestar, like I said, coming into this during the pre-show, I was like, I'm not overly familiar with this person, Feeblestar, beyond the fact that I, <laughs> I looked on my Twitter and I realized Feeblestar was the person to try to um, get me to vote for Team Shonk. So if, if the name Feeblestar rings any bells, it's because Feeblestar is the one repping Team Shonk on your Steam friends list. But um, other than that, I, w I wasn't overly familiar with Feeblestar. But Feeblestar was coming in, making some waves, getting some upsets. So I'm very interested to see how well Feeblestar can do coming up against uh, what is, I guess, a fan favorite in Zakoi. Yeah, who would have thought that a lot of representation today in terms of characters played would have been Sentinel and Jiro and Azoth and Rayman of all characters. Everybody thought this was going to be the Jay Yun show, but it is... A lot of characters we don't regularly see in tournament. Definitely off meta. And it's not to say that like nobody came in here with the meta pick of the Jay Yun. In fact, these people, uh, at least one of them, I believe, had to get through a Jay Yun to get to this point. So it's not to say that uh, just for some reason, nobody under top 31 wanted to play the Jay Yun. But these people all showed that they are better with their off meta picks. Of course, like you said, we've got the Sentinel already locked in from Zakoi. We've got Feeblestar here coming in with the Jiro, one of the uh, less popular picks in the community because of that low strength. Uh, you can generally see uh, Jiro struggle to finish off stocks. Now it is interesting, Zakoi has swapped skins from the rock off of that Sentinel crossover over to a superhero Sentinel which is an interesting choice because he's continuing to do that going forward. He's also dropped the pink color scheme, which is, you know, kind of a bummer. But either way, um, whatever gets you here, right? Like, whatever gives you that emotional boost. We've seen players uh, play with a specific skin setup, and then 
they make the swap and suddenly it's like a whole other person is playing. So maybe that's what's happening here is like this is Zakoi taking off the training weights with the rock, I guess, and going over to superhero mode. Now we'll see if Zakoi continues to do that down sig read on Kataris that he's been doing to a lot of different players quite successfully Three, today. Two, he's been throwing out side light, then he goes into the down signature. Occasionally it's been a neutral light into the down signature. Chasing after his opponent, expecting him to be grounded. There's the neutral light into the side light he was attempting. The evil star getting some unarmed damage, picks up the sword, Nair into the recovery, good way to start it. And a neutral light and a D-light side air. Getting a little bit generous, throwing out those signatures early on in this game, expecting the read. Yeah, kind of went a little greedy with that side sig, specifically off stage because it put him above that hammer. You saw that hammer recovery come out, but Zakoi was not able to get that follow up. Instead, Feeble Star, the one still maintaining control here, hits the recovery, and Zakoi is struggling to get back, but he still survives just enough defense on the Sentinel to get past all of this from Feeble Star. There's the D sig that he ends that half pipe with. 45 seconds into the game, it was looking rough for Zakoi, but with that, he ended up evening it up. Has Feeble Star in the red. Has the weapon, Feeble Star is on. Oh. oh, he goes for the stomp other direction side air instead of the gravity cancel stomp nair that he's been doing. I wonder if he meant to do the nair, but just miss input it. Yeah, that definitely looks like a miss input. Usually when he goes for that nair, he goes for the other direction nair, which goes a little bit more to the 45. And so uh, I think that's what happened there is he ended up miss inputting to the side air. Either way, Feeble Star going to get the first stock here. Deep red, though, on the low defense. Jiro coming in, went in the defense stance to put himself the four. But still, a stomp side air, that stock's going to be gone. Now, he didn't choose to strip the field, and that recovery is going to lead to his stock being lost. Zakoi going back to the Katars. Swapping away from the hammer. Feeble finding some solid unarmed damage early on. Zakoi back onto the hammer, controlling the weapons here a lot better than Feeble Star is. But you, what? Ooh, okay. Caught. All right. Maybe, maybe Feeble doesn't need him. I don't know why Zakoi was just letting him hit all those unarmed hits with a side heavy and a neutral heavy. A little bit of a mental boom there, right? Like constantly thinking that, you know what? I have the weapon advantage, so I should just go in and Feeble Star. Took full advantage of that, just putting hitboxes and Zakoi running into them. And that's going to give Feeble Star a huge advantage coming into these final stocks as Feeble Star basically a full stock. Yeah, definitely a full stock over Zakoi right now. And he misses the ground pound. Zakoi's gone. That is not the first time that that has happened to Zakoi today. But if you look back at the set against Blue Guys, he also lost game one against Blue Guys. We'll see if it's a back and forth here or if Feeble Star can take all the momentum that he got that game and continue it into game two. No character swap from Zakoi as we go to the Demon Island. I don't think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think either of these players has switched on locks. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, Actually, Feeble no, Feeble Star has played some other characters. So yeah, he ran through a bunch of characters. Yeah against uh, Showmaker, playing a Jiro, playing a Fate, and then ending with an That was a off. weird set, to be that fair. Was. Kind that was. Kind of a was. weird set. Meanwhile, game number two. Feeble Star with some good damage, but Zakoi with the vertical, getting some damage built back up onto Feeble Star. Feeble Star sitting on the right side of the stage. Now he's moving forward, using his dashes to change up the way he initiates the D-Light side air, swapping away from the scythe onto the sword again with the side signature. This time it gets punished. Backing up. Only goes for the two go for the hit of that. Didn't even throw out a follow-up. Oh no! Yeah, interesting. Like the dare's a pretty safe option. Uh, if it doesn't hit, usually they're still in their dodge frames, and it's like, all right, well, I'm still above you. I can kind of move out of the way of this one. Uh, either way, Feeble Star is going to get caught by that down signature stock and health completely even. Sukhoi does have the weapon advantage here. Ooh, didn't try to end that with a down signature at all. I guess he had the low damage on a Feeble Star, so he wanted to sit stuck to him like glue and live as long as he could on it. Oh, interrupting that one with a sword neutral light. Zakoi is still getting these openers, getting these downlight hairs. They add up. He's getting a good amount of damage built up onto Feeble Star. Now it's over to the hammer. Lots of good knockout potential here with this hammer. There's the side light goes again for the stomp. Hits the raw nair. Didn't even need the GCD light 
to pick that up. Started with the Nair and ended with that Nair. Only one hit was necessary to get the KO. Again, Feeble Star with the side heavy. Spot dodges, hits the neutral light. Dare, D light. Is Koi gonna recover high? He That's does. Feeble Star goes up, more. hits him with the side air. Ooh, we let him get back. And let him get some extra damage on his return, but a nice neutral light into the recovery. And Feeble Star is gonna even up the stock. This pick of weapon likely will be sticking with the site. This has been the predominant damage building weapon. Sequoia being very careful. You see him just kind of backing up, running away. Weapon spawn comes in. Can people start control this one? The sidelight hits him away. Here comes the hammer stomp side air. Sequoia with a big lead, avoiding that side signature, hits the dare and the recovery and the side air. Ooh, Sequoia. Sequoia, he's hitting these stomps kind of awkward and he's not sure what the option Ooh. is. Nice gravity cancel sideline. I'm surprised he wasn't able to hit the recovery and Zakoi gets the turnaround for the stomp side air to take game number two. That's not the first time that he struggled to hit that recovery off of a gravity cancel on the edge. He did that in a previous set earlier today on the right side. I can't remember what stage it was on, but that's not the first time he struggled to hit that. I'm not sure if... Uh if he did the hard side light or if he did the soft side light because i believe off the soft soft side light the recovery is like basically unavoidable yeah he did the soft three two boy able to avoid it really well done from zakoi and we're gonna be here in game number three of course no character swaps on either side people start able to pick up a sword zakoi on the katars now people start kind of started that off going in big. I mean, it's just an unarmed down air, but that moves you significantly far away from the weapon. So he was banking on that one hitting, and if it missed, it was a free weapon for Zakoi. All he had to do was just kind of stay away from it, which he did. Picked up the first weapon. Now he also has the second weapon. Don't know what that ground pound is, but it might have been a down signature that he missed input. Oh, yo. This time he goes for the follow-up, but does not hit it. Went for the turnaround Nair. I like that he went for a follow-up there, yeah, though. It definitely. shows again that, like, it's pretty safe to go for something after hitting that recovery. Either way, uh, you're getting that damage built up. People start a little bit behind on the damage. Side Sig is going to get the stock, and Zakoi looking pretty good here. Has some help to play with with the Sentinel. We might see a little bit of the sauce come out from Zakoi this game. Throwing out that side signature and hitting that. He's probably feeling good based on this lead he has. Oh, man, you know he wanted a dare there, not a ledge cancel D-Light. Missed the down air. Zakoi gonna go yep. for the big plays. Yep. Hit the weapon toss. Yep. Arm down air. Feeble yep. Star can't touch. He's got the sauce. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Has the two stock lead. Yes, sir. Mixed them all together. Ranch, barbecue, ketchup, Thousand Island Plus. That's what disgusting. What a recovery from Feeble Yeah, I know, that's, right? That's so Feeble disgusting. Star. You're gonna get the stock off of Zakoi. Yo, the plays were disgusting. I made a bet for two quarters to drink a mixture of sauce when I was like 11 and I puked in the in the garden of the hotel. Ooh, that, so, I like that read. Don't don't go for all those sauces. The, the sauce he's doing right now is a sufficient amount of sauce. It's just ranch, the best sauce. This, there's a good amount, of, there's a healthy amount of sauce. People start gonna avoid that down signature read from Zakoi and gets a nice punish. Getting this damage built up, but he needs this stock badly. Does have Sequoia in the orange, but like one more hit. Yep, it was that side air. Put Feeble Star orange, so still a full stock lead. Sequoia turns red. Getting back to the main platform. Oh, the neutral sick gets punished by Feeble Star. Sequoia's been catching people with neutral six today. Hasn't really caught one against Feeble Star just yet. Sequoia weapon disadvantage goes to the left side, picks up the Katars, waiting, floating. Neutral light comes out, goes for the neutral sick the other direction. GC down signature. One of the signatures that covers both sides of you. Zakoi utilizing that to great effect. Feeble Star, the Nair, not as much force, but he's high enough for the second one to get the knockout. But again, Feeble Star, he's behind. He's in the red, and all Zakoi needs is a hammer to finish this game. Yeah, I think that's gonna be, yeah, it is. I couldn't remember if he cycled the weapons at all. It's gonna be a hammer coming in. He's hit the stomps, he's hit the Nairs, he's hit the Sairs. Struggling to find the neutral signature. Feeble Star has him in yellow, has some momentum on his side here. Stomp side air, gonna halt that train, and Zakoi is gonna take game three, now up 2-1 in this best of five. One game away from moving on into Blue Guys, the person who knocked Zakoi into the lower bracket.
Feeble Star, going to try to bring out something big, sticking with the Jiro, but of course, getting rid of Miami Dome. Did not like the Dome. But apparently, Zakoi likes soft platforms as we're yeah. going to Enigma. Have we seen this stage today? I know we saw it a little bit yesterday. I mean, like, as a whole, it is one of the lesser Three, two, picked maps. One, Generally oh. speaking, uh, it is like some players straight up do not like soft platforms, and some players are like, I love me some soft platforms. So it is a little bit of a rare pick. Looks like Zakoi, though, fan of the soft platform. He's just kind of staying on the ground. Feeble Star pushed to the left side, answers back with the side light. Oh, he got the read. Oh, he got the man. dodge, too. Goes for a neutral light the other direction. Did he expect a dodge through, or was that just another miss input? No, that's a, that's a straight reaction, right? Zakoi, when he starts half piping, Feeble Star just throws out the neutral light, comes out super quick, and just halts all of that momentum from Zakoi. That time just didn't get the hit. Oh, dodge dodges. through, avoiding the down sig. Sakoi with a solid damage lead has the KO weapon in hand. Good spot dodge to avoid the side to ground pound reaches over the corner. Sakoi with a weapon oh. toss into the ground pound and Sakoi is going into the second stock of Feeble Star with a lot of health to play with. He's going high for that weapon toss too. And that ground pound from Zakoi was like in the perfect spot. I'm pretty sure Feeble hung onto the wall like he was. Ground pound hits and he goes deeper into the push off column. It Ooh. hits. That say killed in orange. Yeah, Jiro what? has some dummy force on his signatures. It's crazy. He got a He's kill earlier force. on Demon Island with the sword neutral signature on an opponent that was like in just regular red. He's four force right now. He's taken out of the strength stance. Uh, all right, Feeble Star. Has he all but evened up this game? Yeah, Just I mean, like he's, that. he's taking the lead. Yeah, he has the coin in the orange now. Oh! Good pick. But Zakoi able to clap back with the hammer. Oh, goes oh! for the ground pound, but Feeble Star with the punish. Risky ground pound onto a hammer. Feeble Star feeling real good right now. I mean, I would be two after that punish. Zakoi nice. came straight down. Nice. Feeble reached up and grabbed him at the 45 degree angle. Zakoi deciding whether he wants to go under, but he goes back. Good Ooh, avoids dodges it. from Feeble Star. I like what I'm seeing from Feeble Star here because you can tell there's some confidence in what he's doing, but there's also restraint in what he's doing. He's not going too wild with what he's doing, but he is disarmed, and this is what Zakoi needs. Spot dodge avoids the down like throws out the neutral like good spot dodge again. Feeble Star doing such a good job. He knows that he cannot afford to get hit here, and he gets the neutral light. He's going to take the stock advantage, but he needs to add up the damage onto Zakoi. Take this to game number five. Guitars come in. I'm expecting a D sig. We haven't seen Zakoi use recovery nope. too much. Oh, Feeble Star grabs the recovery too. Not a huge risk for Zakoi to get knocked out here, but still, Feeble Star continuing to run this game, interrupts the side signature that Chidori. Zakoi didn't have enough hate in his heart to bring out the Chidori. Very important to have a lot of hate in that Uchiha heart, but Feeble Star, of course, the anime character that he is, is gonna get taken out by the Stomp Cider, but he's just gonna come back. You know, anime characters can't die unless you're like. I suppose. Did Neji die in the first part? That's, that's, okay, then you really did spoil it for me. I know, my best. <laughs> Kinda whack. Sorry. Sorry, I ain't watched the ship it in. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't think you're gonna watch it. Nice down air into the side air coming out from Feeble Star. Zakoi though, gonna get some damage nice. back. Feeble Star with the patience, gonna outspace that down signature. Was ready for that. Ooh, game five potential, very real here. He needs Feeble the Star. Star playing so well. Ooh, what's that dare? What's that dare? That was very bold of Zakoi to go yeah. in with a ground pound there. Telegraphed it quite a bit, and Feeble Star punished it before. Punished the gravity cancel. Dodge on cooldown. Zakoi running out of options here, currently unarmed. Weapon toss gonna keep him off the stage. Feeble Star needs to get this stock though. The longer he leaves Zakoi alive, the more opportunities Zakoi has to get back into this. Neutral light Zakoi. Recovering straight away, doesn't even touch the wall. Oh. That neutral light, that could be bad for him. Did he technically <laughs> touch? I don't think he technically touched. The neutral light from Feeble Star picked him up in the air. He didn't touch the wall previously. That sent him far to the right. He had nothing to get back, and Feeble Star ended it. We're going to game five.
I'm kind of salty that they're going straight into it. Of course, they're both heated. They're both excited. They want to run. But man, I would have loved to see the graphs on that one because it looked like a lot of damage had to be done onto Zakoi's final stock to get that last one. Seeing defense stance coming out from Feeble Star, letting him live just a little bit longer. Three, two, one, brawl. No swaps from Zakoi. Feeble Star is getting these interrupts and like. I know from personal experience that interrupts get oh they, they'll get gosh. you salty, man. He's still keeping the unarmed damage going. He did a lot of work, and it took a lot of work for them to basically be even, but still, they are even, and that's good because Feeblestar now has a weapon in his hand, has Zakoi in the orange, the recovery putting him deeper into the orange. Feeblestar still in the yellow. He can't let Zakoi control the ground. That's where he was struggling previously is when he couldn't land. Zakoi was adding up that damage. Still able to pick up the sword. Still getting these hits onto Zakoi. Wow. It's through it with the spot dodge. Zakoi missing the neutral signature, and people start able to turn that spot dodge into a gravity cancel. But Zakoi still living on this first stock, still has opportunities here. Again, we're still seeing confidence, but more importantly, restraint coming out from Feeble Star. Like you're seeing that spot dodge on the insig that led to the D-Light showing confidence, but he's not going ham. You see him dip down below the soft platform and then immediately go back onto the main stage, pick up the easy side air to get the KO only about halfway through his first stock. But it is still a Jiro, low defense legend. It is easy to chip through this stock, especially when you have a hard hitting hammer. It's gonna be on Zakoi to get these hits though. Gets a stomp side air, another one, and this stock could be gone and Feeblestar is just back to neutral. You know what's crazy? Feeblestar has $10 in earnings. PR 38 compared to the PR 34. Sequoi evening this up in terms of stock, still just a little bit behind in terms of damage. The spawn goes in and Feeble Star immediately runs towards it. Sequoi didn't really try and contest it because Feeble Star had those iframes on spawn. And Sequoi, he had the gravity cancel delight, had the dodge read, but just could not get the extra. But he's still staying even with Feeble Star, which is good for Sequoi because historically, Feeble Star has had to build up a lot of damage to finish these stocks off of Sequoi. Not fallen prey to these signatures anymore. Goes with the ground pound. Not sure if he wanted to just really commit to it or if he wanted to use it like a bait and grab it, end it on that wall. And with the nair into the down light. The boy off stage. Feeble Star. Not going to go for anything oh! too crazy. It's the neutral oh! sig to catch Sequoi on the high recovery. And Feeble Star has one stock left to get through to earn a guaranteed top three finish. He knew exactly where Zakoi was going to be when he would choose to fully recover back to the stage. That neutral signature was so well placed. Continues with the lead he had previously and is still building up damage. Gets away from the weapon toss. Backs away just enough to get away from that ground pound. Again, Zakoi going deep with the ground pound. No punish this time. Side sig does get punished. Three hits, Ooh. almost four. Love that D-Light into the turnaround. Nair, Feeble Star gets the recovery. Not able to hit the ground pound, but still gets this wall touch. Getting more and more damage here. Neutral Sig, one more of those, and Feeble Star could be going into the loser's final. There you see Sakoi going in with the side light into the side air. That's been a regular follow-up when he sidelights someone off stage. Oh, he went Why'd for you do it. That? Went Crazy. for the big play. He might fall here. Doesn't quite have the in-air movement speed, even with the uh he's in the defense stance. So even with the movement speed, doesn't quite have enough to fade back deep enough into the push-off column to avoid the ground pound. But still, huge lead. Just got Sakoi into the red. That recovery sending him off screen. One more, one more delight recovery might seal the deal here, and Feeble Star could move on. On. McCoy needs a gimp here. He cannot afford to play neutral because Feeble Star is just chipping away and will eventually win off of just raw neutral lights or a side light like that. Oh. The down light will do it. Feeble Star gonna take down Zakoi and continue the tear in the bracket to go on up against Blue Guy. There you see that side air. He chose to dip down below the soft platform, then back up. Here's where he calls out with a neutral signature, nails it. And then you see the end of that last game. The side light send him flying, the strong D light to send him to the blast zone. Feeble Star moving on.
PR38 taking out PR34, one of the favorites of this tournament. I don't think Feeble Star was really on anybody's radar to win this tournament. No, uh, unless you're on Team Shonk, you, Feeble Star was very much not on your radar. But I definitely believe Feeble Star has been put on a lot of people's radars now. Looking incredible on, again, this very low picked legend of the Giro. Uh, but he's now going to be running into Blue Guys, a very historied player by comparison. We'll see how well Feeble Star can do against the gauntlets of Blue Guys. Blue Guys, of course, going to be starting off with the Val, and we'll see how well that does. Maybe we'll swap over to the Rayman depending on the set. Now, Blazy was the one who sent Blue Guys down into the loser's bracket. Blazy was also the one who sent Feeble Star down into the loser's bracket. Both sets were 3-1, and it was with Blazy's Azoth. Now we're seeing Feeble Star and Blue Guys duke it out. The loser is going to finish with the bronze medal. The winner will get a chance to fight Blazy again for the salty run back and the big opening favoring Feeble Star early on. Also grabs the next weapon, has Blue Guys in the orange. Untouched so oh. far, Feeble Star. Oh, Can he get the take stock? the weapon. Take the weapon. Who goes for the neutral sink? Oh. Doesn't need it. Weapon toss. All right, over to the sword. Guaranteed knockout potential oh, here. Downlight easy. recovery. Downlight oh, Sare. Man, went for the, the delight Sare. Easily punished. Blue guys heavy? down air to the platform. But blue guys did touch Feeble Star with a hit, so it's not a zero to death. At the very least, and a little bit of more damage coming out. This is again what we're seeing from Feeble Star, and we see from Jiro's as a whole is just that struggle to oh! finish stocks. Blue guys, he's so good. What? Blue guys, what a read so for that ground good. down. So good, getting that KO in orange too. So smart to turn that ground pound around, reading Feeble Star going in. Back towards the stage, people start going to finally finish that stock off with the Neutralite. But man, that's going to make you sweat, right? Like having that big of a lead and just getting caught out once or twice. And you're like, oh, uh, now I'm behind. And you're going to see Feeble, Sw uh, Feeble Star. He started swapping those weapons, but he ended it early so that he could guarantee having a scythe. He didn't want to risk getting hit away and being stuck with a sword in his hand. Blue guys already has Feeble Star in the orange. You guys just adding up this damage. Feeble Star not able to maintain that lead that he had at the very beginning of this game. Throws out the down sig. That's an easy punish for blue guys. And Feeble Star, yep, knows that he is gone. Ends up just kind of side airing off into the distance and coming back on his third stock here in game number one. I got a feeling that we don't see them going back to this map if blue guys takes this. Oh man, the side air. There is a weapon spawn. Blue Guys doesn't even care. He's using it as a trap, throws away his weapon, picks up the sword. Feeble Star, so far behind at this point. Ooh, the backside of that side light. Dropped off. Feeble Star getting some damage here. Goes for the side sig. Reed. Neutral sig would have also launched laterally, so either one of those would have been a horizontal throw, but still, oh. Feeble Star trying to go for big oh. stuff. The recovery dropped. Dodges through the weapon. The Not able to punish. Oh, hits the okay. neutral okay. signature. Okay. Feeble Star makes that signature look so good. Yo, it's nice in terms of vertical priority, though, because you stay low, the hitbox goes high. Lots of opportunities there, but the spot dodge gets read out by Blue Guys, and that's going to be a convincing game number one. That is a nice JV2. That means all of the damage, 434 points that Feeble Star put out went into the first two stocks. Divide that in half, that is 217 damage on average that Feeble Star had to do before he was taken out of stock. For reference, about. you turn red at 150. Now compare that to how Feeble Star was taking out socks with the signature kit that Jiro has from people in the past. He was getting those KOs from the middle of the stage at around 150, 170, 180. That's 30, almost 40 points away from that 217 that it's requiring now to take out Blue Guys. Here we go, game number two, and we're seeing a very different start to this one. Blue Guys, first one to pick up the weapons, even denies the second one, and is still adding up damage onto Feeble Star. Feeble Star finally picking up a scythe, but is behind. 
Now, we've seen blue guys do very well with both weapons here against Feeble Star, where on the other side, it's mostly been this scythe. So it depends on if blue guys can keep Feeble Star not just on a weapon, but on only one of his weapons. I mean, keep him on the scythe, or just, uh, sorry, off the scythe, he has a good chance again to take this. He is a little bit behind here, but that's the way the last game started as well. We do see Feeble Star making the swap over to oh. the sword for the guaranteed knockout with the recovery. I like this map pick in favor of Feeble Star because, of course, with Small Brawl Haven, with the closer kill boxes, he's not going to struggle. He's not going to be knocking out at 215. Uh, did Feeble Star ban out Demon Island? I was doing too much math yeah, in my head. Hit. Okay. Oh. Sidesick went onto the corner. That one's a tricky one. Depending on uh, if he was like a little bit further to the left, it would have ended up just shooting down if Star had a free punish. So I can't overly fault Star for just kind of miscalculating that one. Ooh. Again, blue guys playing around this weapon, not necessarily most concerned with keeping Star away from it. It is going to be a sword, so it's not the biggest deal for blue guys if Star ends up grabbing a sword. The weapon spawn on the left side. We'll see if Evil Star makes the run over there. You see him slowly meandering his way there, but it's not safe. Blue Guys is still active and around it. Ooh, Ooh. He, tried it. he charged up the side sig, but Blue Guys had the punish. That's something that Feeble Star. Oh, does hit Got the him. neutral signature, but he really hasn't had as much success with the signature kit here on Jiro that he had against other players in the past. Like you saw him throwing out those side signatures, and that final swipe of it was catching other people. It seems like Blue Guys either knew about the signature kit better than some of the other players going into this, or he has seen what Feeble Star's been doing with the signature kit and hasn't really fallen prey to them as much. I mean, that's definitely something that happens. Like when you're a relative unknown, right? People aren't going to be as familiar with your playstyle, especially if you're on a lesser picked legend. Uh, and so as these sets progress, of course, people start getting a lot of stream time means that Blue Guys has a lot more uh, gameplay that he gets to watch and analyze. D-Light Dare gets the Nair this time and the side air goes for another side air. Blue Guys has been searching for that neutral air. Feeble Star has dodged through so many of them. That one he got. Goes in with the ground pound. Pulls out a little bit early. Chooses to wait. He didn't want to get his recovery Ooh. interrupted. And gets the KO. Takes another game. Blue Guys. 2-0 on Feeble Star. And this is where you're seeing uh, Feeble Star, who usually likes to utilize the fact that Jiro does have a lot of movement speed to try to get spacing, try to disengage. You saw him really trying to run away from Blue Guys on that final stock, and Blue Guys just had the chase down. Of course, Val, another high movement speed legend. There is Small Mammoth on the board, Small Great Hall on Apocalypse. We're going to Small Mammoth. Defense stance coming out from Blue Guys. Val going to go from six to seven, going to match that movement speed. So he's going to move quickly and is going to be able to tank some hits as well. Three, two. Little interesting, uh, generally speaking, you see Val's go into the strength stance, but it's a little bit less necessary in this matchup. Of course, Feeble Star, very low defense legend, so I'm not sure if Blue Guys is doing that specifically for this matchup or as a whole prefers the defense stance. And what an opening from Feeble Star, but it's still like every time he gets that, I'm reminded of game, game one. one. A weapon toss. Going for the chase with the recovery, but Blue Guy is already finding response relatively even. But again, the neutral sig will connect for Feeble Star. This time, not going to knock. Oh, yes, it will. Didn't have the movement. Feeble Star going to get an early lead, but just barely. Going to punish that one. He was way too low to the ground for that neutral sig to hit. There's the sidelight into the recovery. That sidelight turned him red. Also hit another recovery. Delayed that one just a little bit. Preparing for the dodge to come out. Another D-Light recovery. Now he has the consistency of hitting the D-Light recoveries. He struggled with that a little bit earlier. He wasn't really nailing them against Blazy. And now it seems like he's nailed it down a little bit better here against Feeble Star. You guys is connecting with those D-Light recoveries. Great for finishing off stocks when you have the gauntlet kit. We'll start now going to try to start adding up this damage onto the second stock. Interesting option there. I think that was uh, a, a whiff down sig and instead went for a ground pound because he didn't have the spot dodge. And, and that's side, side signature. Sigs. It is just not Feeble Star's friend here against Blue Guys. 
Has, has people start connected with a side sig at all? I don't think he has against blue guys. Ooh, the down air has blue guys in the red. People start backing up a little bit, giving a lot of respect to blue guys off stage, but he doesn't have gauntlets in his hand. Yeah, people start looking a little bit nervous about those offstage engagements. Uh, ever since that first stock where blue guys got that turnaround and then that ground pound, people start has been really not risking those offstage instead, staying on stage, playing it safe with the scythe. Kit. Already using the cider to get back. Nice. Oh no! Dip just a little bit too far under the stage. I think he panicked a little bit, and Feeblestar immediately was ready for that opportunity. Yeah, took full advantage of it, recognized that Blue Guys put himself in an awkward position. He was like, all right, all I have to do is hit this down air. Not too risky of a play here. Gonna stick with the sword, a little bit safer for now, and getting some good damage built up on the Blue Guys' last stock, but Blue Guys gets the downline recovery. So if you're Feeble Star here, you're looking at having a very tiny lead in this game, but you're down two games in the set. So likely this game could be coming down very close. Even if Feeble Star oh wins no. this, which he oh might no. not, he still has to worry about the Rayman from Blue Guys. What was that? What was that neutral six supposed to hit? Feeble Star just barely staying past Blue Guys, but Blue Guys has such a quick damage build that Ooh, Feeble Star is going to need a lot. Lots of horizontal movement on these gauntlets, and he couldn't touch. He was so close to touching. I wonder if his dodge came off of cooldown. It probably didn't. I bet he might have been mashing it, but he was throwing out a lot of side airs Yeah, there. I think he was thinking of side air. Yeah, he, he could have been mashing the side air and not necessarily focused on yeah. the dodge. But still, it's what we're seeing right now as you see those final moments of the replay. Where did this dodge come out? Oh, no, it definitely oh, was not off of cooldown. Where the weapons yeah, I thought yeah. he'd do it a little bit. Uh, I thought he did it a little bit earlier, like one of the first things he threw out. But we're seeing this Rayman coming out from Blue Guys. He loses one game, and you see him swapping. Yeah, and this is going to be tough for Feeble Star because Feeble Star now has to kind of relearn the matchup. Of course, the, the Gauntlets were the predominant damage builder for Blue Guys on the now, so he's going to have that carryover, and Feeble Star is just going to have to remember that matchup. But Blue Guys does have an axe. Like, Blue Guys isn't just a one-trick Gauntlet's Rayman. He definitely has an axe. But I do worry about him falling down with the dares. We'll see if he comes in at a uh, less straight vertical angle, because I'm worried about that in sync, yep. and I'm worried about the side in sync as stage. well. Nice punish from Feeble Star. Man, this is such a risky map to take a Rayman to with those short walls. Like, I'm surprised Feeble Star wanted this. Oh my gosh, his sword coming out big though early on into this game. Gets the weak hit, but that allows him to get the dare follow up right off of it. Hits the side air. Are we going to see another desync on the edge? He started to telegraph those a lot more, at least on this stage. The wall is tiny, like you said. Oh, big side air, and he's going to take it back. Yeah, and at the very least, like that down signature, you can just charge it, right, and hover there, and your opponent's going to try to wait it out and burn a lot of air movement, and then suddenly you'll see opponents just completely fall off the stage. But you guys in the red, people start looking for the knockout, goes for the recovery, not the neutral signature. You guys still holding on to this first stock. Now he did hit that dare on Feeble Star and basically white and didn't immediately go for the neutral light. Maybe Feeble Star was a little bit too damaged for that to make contact, or he was a little bit too high up when he hit it. Ooh, I'm surprised he wasn't able to punish that. Does get the recovery though to take out off the top, but Blue Guy's still in the lead here, swapping back over to the scythe. Weapon spawn comes in, blessing Blue Guys all the way on the right side of the stage. Ooh. Oh, he almost got caught real bad there. Yeah, you saw if Feeble Star was an inch forward, but there's the short walls playing in favor of Blue Guys with the down signature. This is what I was saying. Like, literally, when I recognized that it was a Rayman on this map, I was like, Feeble Star, what are you doing, man? This is such a bad map for you. Oh, he hit it here again. <laughs> and it didn't drop this time. All right, neutral signature. Going to put Blue Guys off stage, but he's just immediately back onto the stage. The neutral sig. Goes over to the wall, gets picked up by the recovery. Blue guy's nice. having a tough time. Has another yep. side air, but again, not enough. The skin of his teeth here, Feeble Star, trying to take this one to game number five. 
Last stocks here. Feeble Star on his tournament stock. Blue guys. Just needs to finish this one off, and he will be going to the grand finals. He's got to get Feeble Star off of the scythe. Oh! <laughs> oh! He doesn't have to do anything. He just got to hit a down sig. Blue guys got to take game number for the Rayman coming alive. And that is Blue Guys earning his shot in the grand finals against Lazy. He brought out that Rayman after one loss. That's what I want to see him doing here start against Blazy. Because he didn't do that. Oh, he, no, he did bring it out after one loss. He only won one game with that Rayman, though. I thought he brought it out after two losses. No, he, he went straight to the Rayman. I want to see him start with it. That was Blue in his guys. set against Zakoi. That's, he went four games with the Val before finally bringing out the Rayman. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he goes straight into it. He does have to contend against Blazy's Axe, which he didn't have the best luck with earlier. He really struggled against that Axe, and he struggled against the Bow as well. There was no, like, one weapon that he could force Blazy onto, like he kind of could there against Feeble Star. If he forced Feeble Star onto the sword or unarmed, he was in a pretty good spot, but Blazy was doing work unarmed Ooh. with the bow and with the axe. He's going for the Jake. Going for the Jake, the dog, the Thanos setup with the purple Jake. He is Thanos Jake. Uh, I don't think we've seen this Jake yet from Blue Guys, but it'll be interesting to see, of course, sticking with the gauntlets. Definitely uh, expected in the character pool. But definitely not something that we were expecting to come here in the grand finals. Again, Blue Guys coming from the lower bracket has to make the reset. We'll see how well he does as we get into game number one. Definitely not a surprise for Blue Guys at all. Core is going to be his second highest leveled character. He is a gauntlet man, and Core is the second highest level character. So a lot of time spent on this, but he's taken. See, that's what I was talking about. Is Blazy still has the unarmed kit that Blue Guys was struggling against earlier, and now he has the axe. Lazy does have some fantastic unarmed, but also has some great weapon kits as well. The big signature kits coming out from the Azoth down signature. Almost gets a stock. Second one, and Blazy looking healthy here. Didn't even take too much damage while Blue Guys had the control. That sig is so good. Really, it, it's one of the better of the axe signatures for Azoth, for sure. Spot thought out. from Blue Guys. Lazy in the orange. Man, Blue Guys is just not having luck with his stomps. He's throwing out a lot of them. I don't think he's... Has he hit a single one? Finally gets that one. And nice. the weapon toss to clean it up. A classic sword KO option when the stomp side air doesn't kill on its own. Good interrupts coming out from Blue Guys. Good avoidance of the side light as well. Blue guys slowly evening this one up. Lazy though with a nice down light down air. Side light, side air puts blue guys off stage. Blue guys has the threat of the recovery. Blazy, when he saw the recovery go out, that's when he went in and a gravity cancel neutral signature. Blazy about to take game number one at this rate. Team Dash Dance in middle of the stage, gonna swap back, hits no, the neutral the signature on a white opponent. He's still throwing them out. <laughs> Look at the coverage that he has with that. You cover the immediate pro approach on the ground. If you miss with that and Blue Guys is far enough away from you, you throw out the down light to cover the 45 degree punish angle. Yeah, it, it's incredibly safe for Azoth. They can just throw out those down signatures. And you can just tell from the way Blazy is playing with those signatures that Blazy is feeling real comfortable, comfortable right now, feeling real confident. Another down air. Blue Guys is going to be gone. Blazy takes game number one off that recovery stuff. Thanos Jake is not the play. Like, Thanos Jake is usually the play, but Thanos Jake is not the play here going up against Blazy. Blue guy's going snap. immediately to the Rayman. These gauntlets are too, they're too clunky. Can't snap with these gauntlets. Blue guys, like you said, over to the Rayman for game number two. But again, Blue guys on that back foot coming from the loser's bracket has to win three games to get the reset to take Blazy down for a second one, best roll. of five. Both of them kind of moving towards the weapon. Blazy goes a little bit too far, not ready to pick it up straight away. Blue guys grabs the first one, coming in with the ax, steering that one for like as long as he possibly can. I mean, I like it, right? It keeps Blue guys in the air so Blazy couldn't go for like the obvious downlight combo. 
But meanwhile, Blazy just had to wait for the opportunity. Good fast balls to avoid those down sinks. Rayman Axe coming through early on in game one. Ooh, side air. It happens to side air the wrong direction, expecting Blazy to be to the right side of him. It's above it. Didn't hit the ground pound, but blue guys looking real healthy here. Blazy was not able to amount much on that first stock. Keep him off a weapon. That is your best chance in this game because now he has an ax in his hand and we could see it start to go the way of Blazy here. Side light side air again. Puts blue guys off stage. Goes for the down signature. You guys actually going risky with that recovery in the wrong direction, but building up this damage onto Blazy. Oh, he goes with the ground pound, basically point blank. Goes for another one, the nice. same spot. Weapon toss goes oh. down, hits the recovery, saved oh, it. Oh, whoa, oh, he went for the dare? D light dare, hits why the down dare? signature. The Rayman coming through like it couldn't before. Why did you dare? He mashed the down light and then went into a dare. Blazy. Now on his final stock here in game number two, about to get three stocked off the blue guys swap over to the Rayman. Goes for the D-Light into the Nair. Our recovery has to do it now, but blue guys putting out the damage. The Nair comes out, basically stacked, hits the KO off the top, swapping weapons. Down light. Trying to get some juggles here. Keeping blue guys in the sky, but blue guys slaps down with the down light. Gets a side light, side air. Weapon toss up, reading the jump from Blazy, but Blazy still gets the wall touch. But that down sig will connect. Blue guys going to take game number two, put it at one apiece. There was like a 300 damage difference, almost exactly. Blue guys put out 538. Blazy put out 237. Oh my gosh. You guys looking like a whole different beast with this Rayman. Blazy. Uh, taking it to a different map. Didn't like the small Three, mammoth, two, but still likes one, a relatively one. small flat map with a single soft flat. Ooh, that weapon spawn coming in low. Blaze is able to grab the first one this time. Unlike last game, where Blue Guys got the first weapon, Blazy also grabs the second weapon and takes the third weapon. Not a good start for Blue Guys here. Spawn comes in, still not able to grab it, picks it up. Neutral Light comes out. Nice double dare into the nair from Blazy. Recovery almost gets a stock, but the side air will. And Blazy looking strong again. The one thing I am left wondering right now in this grand finals is where are those six from Blazy, man? We saw him so much in the winner's bracket. All right, there we go. That's all it answered. He really hasn't been throwing out the bow neutral sig like he was a lot earlier. There's yeah. the D sig hitting in the orange. The nair uh, interrupts. Oh! Didn't even need any more moves to connect after that Nair came out. Got the interrupt on the recovery, and Blue Guys is back in this one after a rough start. Yeah, I'm okay, all right, chill. Back to life. <laughs> all right, he's feeling good. All right. Went for the neutral sig, didn't get punished. Blazy gonna throw out a neutral signature of his own at the top of the map. Avoids the down signature. He went for the reverse on stage down signature as well, expecting Blazy to move a little bit more onto the platform than he was. Sidelight Nair goes for the GC down signature. Maybe chill out a little bit on that, because that's twice now that he's felt safe throwing it out, but then he got punished afterwards. Blazy hunting for the knockout. You see these recoveries come out. Blue guys still needs to add up a little bit more damage onto Blazy. Recovery should do it. Yes, it will. Lazy going to put Blue Guys onto his final stock here in game number three. Would you happen to know if the Rayman acts down signature into sidelight is still true at white? Oh, uh, I can't remember if Boomy or one of the people on Boomy's stream earlier today said it was true or not. I don't remember. It used to be. It used to be. And it used to be a really good stock starter. Side Sig, though, really good stock. Finisher, going to be sticking with the axe. You see the way he's jumping all the way up there, wants to be going over to the gauntlets. Uh, and stock and weapon evened up. Ooh, punishes the signature, doesn't get hit by it as well. That's two good boxes to check off. Oh, you saw him fade back after that dare too. 
He's gonna have to space so well here. He's behind. There's another D-Light Dare. This time he doesn't fade back. Another Dare. He's bringing it back. Hits the Nair up the edge. Uh, lazy. Yet to find a hit on the blue guys. Starting to struggle here. Blue guys is close to that kill percent. All Blazy needs is a good down signature, and it could be enough. Blue guys I'm, has Blazy in the red. I'm waiting on the instinct. Where's the instinct from Blazy? He doesn't have gauntlets to use the side air. He delays it, and Blazy Whoa. doesn't feel comfortable going in. What? Oh, no! Ah! Ah! If he would have hit that Weapon recovery control. before, that ah! recovery would have killed. Missed. Oh, it's so close. One recovery. Missed the oh! side sink. Blazy with the raw nair. It's not enough. Blue guys still able to pick up the gauntlets. Oh, recovery. Blazy takes game number three in a nail biter, and that puts Blazy. One game away from earning that ticket to ride, earning that invitation to the final, the top 32 for the World Championship in North America. The end of that was so close. Delight into the recovery he misses. He's hit so many of those today. The side sig, one of the rare side sigs that we've seen from Blue Guys so far, does it trying to clutch out that last round, but in comes the recovery from Blazy. No character swaps, but there is a skin swap for Blazy. Yeah, interesting. Swap on win, what a, what a wild man, but man, that was close. You can see at the very end there, both of them, their they're, uh, peak damage on that final stock, both in the 200s. They were so incredibly close. That was one hit either way, but here we are. Game number four, Blue Guys versus Blazy. Blue Guys Three, two, needs to win one, this to take four. game five to hopefully try to reset. Blazy just needs this to win. Blue Guys was so close to coming back at the end of that game. I don't know if you noticed on the graph, but a good chunk, basically half of last game, Blue Guys spent on his last stock. Yeah. That's how long he extended yeah. that final stock all the way to last hit red for both players. Almost a last stock legend. Almost, but not quite. Throwing out the neutral sig, but blue guys stacked up. Now Blazy feeling real good as he hits the side sig. And Blazy is he's starting to run away with this already. I'm going to have to play against this character in my rank games, aren't I? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, man. Ooh, the oh. weapon toss. Oh, he went for it. That weapon toss saved Blazy. It put Blue Guys in the hit stun so we couldn't chase after hitting that. Nice three piece from Blue Guys, though. He's going to have to find big work. Whoa. Big Whoa. work, real quick here. Right, avoidance. Blazy with the wild oh. neutral signature. Oh, he missed the recovery. Down Sig and Blazy is one stock away from doing it. This is hard to watch. After last game, this is hard to watch. Yo, it's hard, man. It's hard being that damaged. But Blue Guy is going to finish off this first stock of Blazy, at least not going out getting three stocks. Still has to pull up big. This right here, winning this would make him a last stock legend by many accounts. Oh, goes for the near the other direction. It oh, still hits oh, it. Oh, oh, this is bad. Oh, oh, this no. is bad. Oh, is he done? Oh, he's not. Still hits the recovery. The damage. Oh, no. No, he's done. He's done. continues. How Get did that out. almost KO Blue Guys? Has to play flawlessly to even have a oh. chance to take this. The side air comes out. The dodge to get through the weapon toss. Side oh, sig no. from He's done. Lazy the Wild Man, the Skeleton, will win for the North American Last Chance Qualifier. Blazy 3 wanting his way through the top eight on the Azoth, and he will be the 32nd invite to BCX. What a set from Blazy. The swap to Rayman almost was enough to do him in, but then you saw in that last game, no way, Jose. Was Blazy going to let that happen all the way through the bracket on the winner's side? Like you said, in top eight, 3 1 against Feeble, 3 1 against Blue Guys, and then 3 1 again against Blue Guys. Quick poll of chat. Uh, one's in chat. If I was right and Sparky was wrong. Uh, that's 
I think I think I was right on the picks on the predictions. I just I just I want to double check if chat also agrees with me because blue uh, because Blazy is the one to win it out for North America. Congratulations to Blue guys. Really good run.